Hey, what's up, goalies? This is a quick video on when and when not to use the RVH. I'm using some old clips from a private lesson I had last year that showcase pretty well when not to be down too soon in the RVH and when to kind of hold your feet and wait for that shooter to come to you. One thing to note before we get started is the RVH is way overused at most levels of hockey. Even now in the NHL, you are seeing goalies transition to use more of an overlap or even a panda post lock in some situations. The RVH should never be a move that you find yourself in waiting for the puck to come to you or waiting for the shot. It should be used as you use the butterfly, a reactionary save that you drop down into to seal the ice or to seal off the post when the shot is fired. A good rule of thumb is to hold your feet as long as you possibly can. And without further ado, let's get started. In this first version of the drill, the shooter has the option to go ahead and pass out to the front or wrap around the net. The goalie has to go ahead and follow that puck the entire way, try to stay patient, and try to hold his feet as long as he can, which he doesn't do here in the first clip. It's important to note that holding your feet here as long as you can gives you a much better chance of making that save because then you're not already on your knees and you can drive off that post a little bit quicker. The RVH is overused and this is a good example of why a lot of NHL goalies are moving to the overlap or holding their feet longer on their post if they can. In this clip, the goalie uses the RVH as intended and drops down to it as the shooter gets closer to the net. Remember, we want to use the RVH as a reactionary save, not something that we're just waiting in for the shot to come. Because he waited and then went down and sealed the ice, the rebound save now becomes much easier and he's able to stay composed as he goes post to post. Our goalie makes some good saves on these two clips, but it's a great example of wanting to hold our feet longer on the post. For example, right here you can see that as the goalie drops, there's that split second where there's a little bit of space in between himself and the post and even upstairs in that corner. In a game type situation with a shooter above the goal line like he is now, it opens up that space just enough that a good shooter can put it behind you. Same thing here. The shooter sees the goalie make the first move and he knows that he has that upper corner open for a quick backhand shot. Compare it to this clip where the goalie does a good job staying on his feet and hinging out off the goal post to come out and be square and take the angle on the shooter. Then on this clip, where the puck is passed from the corner, the goalie stays on his feet, which gives him a much better opportunity to come out and be square to the puck, as well as quicker as he comes off the post out to the top of the paint. You can see it executed even better in this last clip, where the goalie really drives off that post with a nice hinge to take the space away from the shooter on that angle. By holding his feet, he does not make the first move, and therefore the shooter's options are limited. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you got a little bit out of this video and have a better idea of when and when not to use the RVH. Stay tuned. I'll be doing a video on overlapping and when that's important versus using the RVH. Keep your stick on the ice and I'll see you soon.